Hey y'all, I'm here. So today I'm going to talk about how to switch out UDEV or EUDEV for MDEVD and LibUDEV0. So before we get started, a few warnings. One, all of these instructions are going to be super Gen2 specific. Some or all of them might work on Gen2 derivatives, but for sure, they're like not even worth trying on anything unrelated. Because honestly, doing this on Gen 2 is hard enough. I'm pretty sure trying it on something else would just be straight up painful. Although, there are distros like, I think, KISS that use this combo by default. So, I mean, those rather than painful, it would just be do nothing, voila, you've switched. So yeah, that was more of a note. Now, Actual warning, with my setup, even messing up a few things that I'm going to instruct how to not mess those up, I still was able to boot my system just fine and could sign into a TTY to pretty much mess with things from there. I can't guarantee that'll be the case on every setup, so if you feel like following along, be sure to set up some sort of live USB first, in case you need to root in to fix things. Also, couldn't hurt to back things up first, especially if you have like any level of disk encryption that would make accessing it without a bootable system harder. So, with those out of the way, let's do some initial sanity checks. So, the Gen2 wiki page which is kind of hit or miss on this, mentions that if you have a full desktop environment, those pretty much require you dev. Like, that's gonna be pretty much a showstopper here. And, like, checking what profile you're on is a good way to make sure that this will work. So, eselect profile list. And just make sure that you're on a default one rather than one of the desktop ones. And next up, just see what depends on UDEV and how hard. So just assuming you have eQuery installed, eQuery D UDEV. And like you can see that I have some stuff here, but almost all of it depends on virtual slash udev. The only things on this list that should be showing sysfs slash udev are the virtual packages themselves, virtual lib udev, and virtual udev. If you have anything that for whatever reason hard depends on sysfs udev specifically, which I don't know that anything actually does, like that's why virtual packages exist, but if you do, that would also be an issue. And anything with hard dependencies where it's not like depends on it if you have the UDEV use flag set, those are also worth keeping an eye on because there is no guarantee that they'll play nice with alternate implementations. On this list, I don't think I did anything special with OBS and I'm recording with that right now, so that seems fine. UDevil, I think, is just straight up completely broken and I just have space of him not using it. And space FM. I haven't really noticed any issues that weren't directly related to you, Devil. Yeah, and some other potential issues that the wiki mentions that I personally haven't run into just because I don't use the hardware for these issues. There's some ATI slash AMD graphics cards that require binary blobs, so if you have sysfs slash radeon ucode installed, the wiki page, which I should be linking down below, has some extra steps you'll need there. 
and also has some extra steps for CUPS USB printers. Now, this next step isn't in the wiki, but is something I did just to be safe, and I'm going to recommend for anyone insane enough to follow this too, and that is making a note of what that you have installed is currently using the UDEV use flag. So yeah, this is a one-liner that I basically just lifted from the eQuery man page. So for pkg in inline command eQuery dash q has use udev do echo dollar pkg colon space just to show what package this is for. Another inline command eQuery dash q uses dollar pkg type that to grep udev done and I'm gonna just let it print to the terminal but it's better to pipe this to a file or if you want to see it real time as well just pipe it to t and let that write it to a file Yeah, so this will just go through everything that has the UDEV use flag and just show whether it's set or not. So you can see that I kind of just unset it for most things, only having it set for stuff that seemed like it would use it. I genuinely don't remember why I have it set here, but... Yeah, Xorg server, for sure, you're going to want it just for easier input drivers. Yeah, so this way you can see what state these are starting in. And since MDevD on its own isn't great about hot plug, it's also good to make a note of what kernel modules are loaded. So... Just sort of ls mod, and you can send that to a file the same way that you sent this last command to a file. And like, there may be kind of a lot, but you're not going to need all of these. Used by is the more important one, because then you can see what's pulling like, everything else in. It's so like, I don't need to tell it to load SSB, BCMA, and Cordic, because I can just say, like, load B43. And... Not sure why it's not right here in my notes, but it is also good to add some files to slash etsy slash modules load dot d to like actually load these on boot. Alternatively there is like a little two or three line shell script hot plug handler on the wiki page that you can use and I might end up using too. So yeah as far as like modules load I'm just gonna do Quick ls, so if you want you can just kind of chuck all of them in one file, but basically you just want .conf files that just kind of list module names to load. So let's look at Broadcom as an example. You can see it just says B43 because that's the one thing, the one module that I needed to load for me to have working Wi-Fi. 
And just for another example, audio, SND, HDA, Intel, same deal. It'll just pull in like everything else that it needs. And you don't necessarily need to set all of these right now, but at least set network related ones so that you can have working internet when you restart. And now that we've made a note of the current state, there are some kernel options that you'll need to make sure are set. So under device drivers, generic driver options, you want to make sure that maintain a dev tmpfs file system at slash dev and auto mounting it are both set because you kind of need slash dev to exist. So yeah, once those are good and you got everything noted, getting mdevd and libudev0 and like the virtual udev, libudev that actually depend on them requires adding an extra overlay. So just as root eselect repository enable and this one is just such a hot mess of characters and I'm genuinely curious what thought process went into naming it. But it is DM9P capital Z capital C capital A Q. Then after enabling it, you'll also want to again as root emaint sync dash r that same absolute mess of a repo name just to actually get the e-builds from it and i already got it enabled and synced so i'm not actually gonna run that right now but if you're following along feel free to just pause the video until that's taken care of and actually, you don't even need to pause because these next couple steps are not really dependent on it yet. So there are, there's one or two lines that you'll want to add to slash Etsy, slash portage, slash package dot mask. And it is sysfs slash udev, and if you still have eudev as your udev provider, then you'll want to mask that as well, just to make extra sure that mdevd and libudev0 going forward are all that get pulled in. Then also, if you want, you can just globally set minus udev as one of your use flags, just disable it for anything where it's optional, and then just set it for any individual package that needs it. Or you can just go through later and see which ones can go without it, and for now just focus on keeping things kind of as is. Yeah, the option of setting it globally is why I said to make a note of what is and isn't using it before going into this, then if you just make a complete mess of things, you can at least see where they were at before. And then one little startup script that you need to add for something that udev does and mdevd doesn't. So it'll go in slash Etsy slash local dot d and like stuff in here is processed in lexical order so 
it's good to have this with a nice early name. The wiki recommends 000, zero so that's what I went with. And it'll also need to end in dot .start and be executable. So, I'm just going to use less to show it, but for making it you'll obviously need like an actual text editor. So just a little line at the start to say it's a shell script. Mount dev pts, just something that, something under slash dev that udev mounts, I think, and mdevd for sure doesn't. And then make sure the permissions on slash dev slash shm are as they need to be. So it's mount dev pts to mod 1777-dev-shm. At this point, the only other thing left to do before actually switching out the udev provider, if you're tracking stable, for some reason this alt repos virtual udev is not marked as stable, so Gonna just kind of prep for it to show, but in slash Etsy slash portage slash package dot accept keywords, you all need a line for virtual slash udev colon colon dm nine p z c a q just to make sure that you can actually install this and. With this next command, we're going to be crossing, I mean, not really the point of no return because you can still switch back later by just undoing this stuff, but the point where you should actually consider if this is what you want to do. So just as root, emerge dash c sysfs slash udev and if this doesn't work, then switch that to eudev. Double ampersand, again as root. Emerge, I have this in my notes with dash dash one shot, and I have no idea why, because that just doesn't seem like the best way to do this. Yeah, there might be a reason that I'll remember during editing, so I'll just put it in there. Sysfs slash mdevd. And if you want to be really safe, you can put in that whole mess of a repo name. virtual slash udev, and here you actually need to specify the repo name. syslibs slash libudev0, same repo. And virtual slash libudev same repo. And just kind of like take a second, look at this command, make sure that you want to do this. So like here's basically your last chance to take the blue pill and stick with udev. And if you're ready to take your primer in, then you can just hit enter, put in your password if it prompts. For all I know, you might have used sue, so you might already be root. And just let this do its thing. And then one thing that at least the default 
mdevd rules that this installs depend on the the package itself doesn't pull in as a dependency you're going to want to emerge dash dash no replace because you don't need to reinstall it account group slash input just to make sure that that stays a thing not necessarily right the second but at least before your next step clean then a couple things that you're likely to need to rebuild before rebooting are hexorg server and xorg drivers and you might need to either install or reinstall xf86 video whatever because i know that when i initially rebooted for this i got the no screens found error that at least nine times out of ten maybe ten times out of ten is just you don't have the video driver installed or installed properly or whatever yeah you need to rebuild some stuff just so it links against libudev0 instead of the old libudev not everything is going to break, surprisingly, but pretty much anything you run into that complains heavily, try rebuilding it and see if that helps. And also, before restarting, you'll need to add a startup script for mdevd. So, the not a bug for that repo has a run it script for this, and I think mdevd's git repository has ones for s6 just with like a semi-lazy search i couldn't find any for openrc so i just kind of had to guess at making my own so etsy and it dot d mdevd and a lot of the boilerplate stuff up here I think is just like Vim extensions that are available as a Gen 2 package. It's so like just making a new file here added all of that. So yeah, it runs with slash sbin slash openrc run just auto gpl v2s for whatever reason. I think name might have just been autofilled, description I probably put in, like none of that stuff really matters. If command and command args commented out, just because I didn't think I'd need them. Then depend, I don't know if it actually requires all of these, or if all of this is even like right. I just kind of based it off of the udev init script. So need sysfs makes sense. Dev mount definitely makes sense because it's just looking at stuff in dev and setting permissions accordingly. Provide dev. And I don't know if this before line actually affects anything. Then I don't have anything special for stop or restart, although I probably should. And start just launches mdevd with dash f because by default mdevd looks for slash etsy slash mdev.conf and this ebuild installs the config at slash etsy slash mdevd.conf. Then dash capital O4 is something that I don't think I'm even like using the functionality from, but one of the repos, I think mdevd's one, kind of recommended this. It rebroadcasts U events, and I think the idea is so that instead of having this config file, you can just have it pass different device types off to different handlers 
without MDev D even needing to think about like what handlers are getting what. Not a hundred percent sure on that, but that's pretty much my understanding. Then dash capital C to run mdevd cold plug whenever mdevd is ready for it. If you're expecting to restart mdevd at any point while the system's running, this isn't actually recommended. It's more recommended that you just run the cold plug once at boot, but like if you're only starting mdevd at boot and not restarting it, then this should be fine. So yeah, sort of save and exit that, make sure it's executable, and then there are a few things in terms of init scripts that you'll need to update. And these are just OpenRC instructions. If you're using Runit or whatever, I'm just going to trust that you know what you're doing. So RC update del udev sysinit because udev isn't installed anymore. And then same deal with udev trigger. And then RC update add mdevd or whatever you called its init script. And again, sys init. You also want to rename any network scripts that you rely on. So just to kind of show what I'm talking about. So UDEV likes to rename network devices based on like what bus they're on and I think what driver they're using or whatever. If you're not using UDEV, it doesn't do that, so just first Ethernet device is going to be ETH0, first wireless device is going to be WLAN0, and then they just start counting up. So yeah, you'll want to rename network script to reflect that, just so that things actually work. And then just make sure that they run, just kind of... RC update, add them with the new name, and I just kind of have them at default. I don't actually remember if that's the right run level, so just do a quick little RC status dash A to see like where your network stuff is at right now. So that's pretty much all I have noted for this. At this point, you should be good to just reboot your system and see how much things break. And for the most part, I'm just going to hope that anyone following this can troubleshoot any issues they run into. But I will probably do a couple follow-up videos for specific things, like I know I needed a script to set the proper permissions for my phone so that screen copy could, like, access it. Yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully, hopefully it either helped or entertained at least someone watching it. And, uh, yeah, have a nice rest of your day.